Hey everybody, welcome to my Astro Vlog, and today I'm going to be reviewing the 2 inch hydrogen alpha filter from Ethi Vani and why I think this would be better as a 77 millimeter filter. So I've been looking at doing hydrogen and alpha for a while now. I've been shooting one shot color for pretty much my entire astronomy life and I thought, why not give it a go? However, being budget conscious, I didn't want to spend hundreds of dollars on a two inch filter so I could give it a go with my full frame sensor camera. So therefore, I found this on AliExpress at about, I think I spent it $120. I think normally $129, there was a sale going and I ended up getting this filter. Now. The first thing people are probably going to ask, is it actually a seven nanometer hydrogen alpha filter? And while I don't have a spectrometer with me currently, I did do this basic test where I took a prism sunlight and a white sheet of paper, and I got the following results using a full spectrum camera. As you can see from the results, it doesn't really feel like a seven nanometer bandpath. It might be a little bit wider. And when I did some calculations based on the images and using some data, I pulled off of Photoshop, and I came up with about 77% light transmission at the highest bandpath, which I'm assuming is 656, which is where hydrogen alpha sits. With this information at hand, this didn't stop me from trying it out in a real world experience. I do have a modified full spectrum Lumix G5 camera. So I decided to give that a go and compare that with an RGB image, which I have here. I then decided to combine the two images into one, which is normally what you're going to do with the extra data. And I had a couple different steps. First, I stripped out the hydrogen alpha data. I then combined it, did some light curve adjustments and got the sort of final hydrogen alpha red image, which I then playing around with LRGB channels turned into this yellow one. And again, made a few other little minor changes. And then I applied some additional sharpening, clarity, and saturation adjustments in order to get this final image, which I really feel pops and is a little bit different than your normal red rosette image. And I was quite happy with it. However, given the large bandpass that I observed with the filter that I received, I decided that maybe a full spectrum camera would not be the best application for this filter because I pick up so much infrared in addition to red and the hydrogen alpha channel. So I decided to give this a shot with my unmodified Nikon Z6 camera. And I took this picture of the North American Nebula. I then went and took the filter off and got this RGB image. And like the picture before, I decided to combine the two and produce this final image, which really pulls out the red in the nebulosity of the North American Nebula. And to be honest, I'm pretty happy with this. At the end of the night, this is a nice budget filter for people who want to dip their toes in narrowband imaging, but don't necessarily want to take on the expense of a dedicated hydrogen alpha filter. It would be good if they came out with a 77 millimeter version of this filter that you could then mount on the front of your camera lenses. I feel like this would definitely target the budget conscious individuals who don't necessarily want to go out and buy a telescope and may still be working on a star tracker. Another potential application for this filter is for people who want to do HARGB or people who want to do RGB and swap this filter out for their red filter. And you're going to get a, mo a more aggressive bandpath, especially in areas where light pollution may be an issue. So I'll have a link in the description for the filter. It may or may not be affiliated at some point, um, which basically means I get a couple pennies for every time you buy it. But overall, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. And otherwise, thank you for watching.